Hey guys, it's Shanti Halima. Thank you for tuning in today with Any Talks. Any Talks, Any Talks. Welcome to the show. Here we go with Any Talks. Any Talks, Any Talks. Welcome to the show. Here's the host. It's Any Talks. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Annie Talks where we bring to you interesting stories about interesting people that you want to know about. I'm your host Annie Rivera. Thank you for tuning in and to those who have already subscribed. If you're new to the podcast, welcome and I hope you enjoy what you hear and if so, I personally invite you to subscribe. Annie Talks is brought to you by Daily Gadgets and More. Daily Gadgets and More is proud and committed to offering the largest variety of high quality products at the lowest prices and the best customer service. Find us on Instagram or visit dailygadgetsandmore.com. That's dailygadgetsandmore.com. Hey there, everybody. Happy New Year. It's 2019. This is the Annie Talks podcast. This is one of the very first episodes in the new year. So I'm super excited to have you on board. If you're new, thank you so much. And if you've been here before, thank you, thank you, thank you as always. This episode, I had the wonderful privilege of speaking with Shanti Helena, who is born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. And she's an entrepreneur, author, and podcast host. She is the author of a self-help and relationship book called Why Side Chicks Winning. It has five stars on Amazon, so you'll want to go check that out. She recently also started her own t-shirt line, and as I said, she is a podcast host of her own show. She embodies the true boss babe mentality and is an empowered career woman. The year 2017 was the year she finally jumped out on faith and found her purpose. Her story is very encouraging. So without further delay, here now is my conversation with Shanti Helena. Shanti, Helena, thank you so much for being on the show. I really, truly appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yay. So let's get started. Why don't you jump right in and give a sense of who you are and your, your hometown, your background, and then give us a story about how you, uh, what inspired to you to write your book. As, um, as we mentioned earlier in the intro, uh, you are an author and you are also a an entrepreneur. So we'd love to hear just how your story started. And um, why don't you share that with us with us right now? Absolutely. So first, I would like to introduce myself as Ishanti Halima. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I know, right? So I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, on the south side of Chicago. Um, my background pretty much has always been the entrepreneur, boss chick, be your own boss mind frame. Mm-hmm. I've had several jobs in corporate. Um, corporate was just wasn't for me. Well, I didn't know that at first. So let's just rewind to my education. You know, you go to school, you get these degrees, you accumulate a hundred and some thousand dollars in student loans. Um, (laughs) I received my associates in radio and TV. I received my bachelor's in communication, my master's in integrated marketing communication. So at the time I still had the boss chick inside of me but I was like a worker. I'm like, I'm still going to go to work. I'm still going to go to work and enslave and work for someone. And I was still slightly putting my dreams on hold. Mm-hmm. So I've always been that person that has some sort of new business. Uh, my first business was a, actually a accessory jewelry line, a boutique in person mm-hmm. before boutiques was even hot. I right. was like the stuff in college. I would, I literally had my la- last $500 to my name and I'm like, how can I flip this $500? Boom, I turned that 500 to 1000 and so forth. Um, that business did well. It was paying my bills throughout college. And so as time went on, I'm like, you know what? I think it's time for me to step out, step out a little bit more on faith and see exactly what I want to do. 
I always knew that I was going to be something um, big as far as a speaker or some sort of um, leader. I just mm -hmm. didn't know where. So how did the book come about? It actually was never planned. I never planned on writing a book. I actually hate writing. <laughs> I do not like writing. Um, mm. I did it just because I had to do it at work or I had to do it at school or whatever. So in 2017, as I mentioned in, in previous, in all of my interviews where 2017 was a bad year for me. Mm -hmm. And when I say bad, let's just start from the beginning. My relationship was going very, very well with the man I was in love with. My income was looking good. I just moved into my new condo, my friends, everything was on point, right? Mm -hmm. So me and my ex end up breaking up. I end up losing my job, which I was for me was like a big job for me because I'm like, this is my first job, my right real job after my master's. Mm -hmm. I made it, mama. I was super excited. Lost <laughs> my job, lost a lot of friends. And then sad to say, I lost my home in a fire that I could have died in. And I was semi-homeless for a while. Oh my in goodness. In the midst of all of that, mm -hmm. listen, in the midst of everything, I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And my relationship at the time, it ended so bad, so, so bad. I was like, I want to write a book. Instead of me taking my frustration out on this man, I'm going to put my pain on paper. And I just started writing. I started writing my book as of I, the second week, I want to say October 13th of last year, I started writing my book. By mid-November, my book was fully completed. And wow. mm -hmm. I just kept going. And mind you, the fire had started. I lost my job. Everything was still taking place of me right in the midst of me writing my book from the beginning to the end to the marketing and so forth. So the entire project wasn't actually completed until uh, the end of December. Mm -hmm. So I just pretty much just jumped out on faith on everything. And through all the trials and tribulations that I was going through in 2017, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to write a book. And a lot of people was actually taking me as a joke. Like, mm -hmm. you're not going to write a book, Shanti, whatever. Because everyone always say what they're going to do. Yeah. But they never do it. Right. Me, I actually did it. I'm like, I got this $1,500 MacBook laptop. I have nothing but time on my hand. I'm not working. I'm not doing anything. What is stopping me to write my book and tell my story to help other women to make sure they don't make the same mistakes that I made. <laughs> ah, right. Well, tell us about the book. What's the name of the book? And then what's, what's the content of the book? And what can we as uh, readers and listeners um, expect from the book? So the title of my book is Why Side Chicks Winnie. It's a self-help relationship book for women that has been in previous bad relationships or may be in a current relationship and it's pretty much trying to move forward in life. If you are in a current relationship, I do have a note journal uh, section in there where you can do activities within your current relationships and make it better. But mm -hmm. also throughout the book, if you are a bitter woman, you're angry, you're mad, I'm letting you know that you are not alone. I've been through the same thing. Everyone in this book is stories that I wrote are 100% true stories of real relationships to let you know that you are not alone, but how can you move past that? How can you get you back? How can I get Shanti back? How can you get any back? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what my book is about. And then where can we find it? So my book is available in two locations. You can go to amazon.com and type in Why Side Chicks Winnie, the ebook version and the actual book will pop up. Or mm -hmm. you can go to my website at www.shantihelena.com. So I, I wanted to dive a little deeper uh, uh, as far as the, the actual title of the name uh, of the book. You say Side Chick. So can you explain... Um, for somebody like me, who, when I came across the, the title, I kept thinking, what, what does she mean by side chicks winning? What, what, do, what do you mean by side chicks winning? What, what are side chicks? So let's break down a title. Yeah. Why, the word why, meaning I'm asking a question, not making a statement. Mm -hmm. Side chick, meaning the other woman, the mistress, the side piece, whatever you want to describe it as, is the other woman at the end of the day. I use the word winning because it's a metaphor. So in order for you to understand why side chicks are, well, why side chicks winning, 
the word winning is an actual metaphor throughout the whole entire book. And when you read the book, you're going to say, OMG, I see why she named this book that title. So I don't want to give away too much, okay. but it's a metaphor. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then you talked a little bit about these are true life stories. So what are some of the stories? Just give maybe one small snippet of, the, of a story that you write about What in, in the inspiration. I can, um, talk about my personal stuff. I was okay. dealing with someone for almost three years. I was unaware that he was married. He mm. had a whole second family and we were doing great. I never had any signs that I was a side chick. And it's just a little side note to give you a little bit more. I actually talk about that. They are three different type of side chicks and mm. I was one of them. And so everyone was like, how did you not know you was a side chick? Well, if you're meeting the family, you're meeting the friends, he's spending the night, he's always available, we're taking trips, we're doing these things. How would I know that I was a side chick? So mm -hmm. I actually told my story, a small snippet of my story in the book, because I knew eventually people would want to know, like, what was your story? So I was a side chick. Am I proud of it? Absolutely not. It's something that I actually did not sign up for. But I also tell other stories where women who don't even care about being a side chick. Ah, yeah. Okay. So you, so it's an empowerment as well as a true life story. So you, it's, it's, it's helping women to um, see signs, recognize those signs, and then um, do something about it, right? To, to get out of those um, toxic relationships or toxic environments or toxic situations right absolutely but the twist to it is mm -hmm. what is she doing to entice my man so by ah. me being the side chick I knew that because I knew what I was doing to pull him away to walk away from his family to be with me so I sat down and said hmm what am I doing right to make this man just give it all up mm -hmm. and I listed that in the book because I'm listing myself as a side chick and why are side chicks winning? What are they doing that you are not doing? So you need to take whatever she's doing and put it into your relationship. Ah, okay. So I guess the, the, the moral of the story is everybody go uh, get her book, read side, <laughs> why side chicks winning. Cause I'm, I'm super intrigued now. I just, I'm, I just want to read it. And um, I know that it's a super easy read. So I have a feeling that I'll probably sit there in one city and probably read it all. Cause that's yes. how I am. <laughs> yes. And actually I did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. because I've read I'm a big book reader mm -hmm. I like books that get straight to the point when I originally wrote the book it was double the size and my publisher was like no cut that out and get straight to the point people want to get straight to the point all my readers was like honey I haven't even made it past page five yet and I'm already blown away <laughs> Wow, I'm excited to read this. Now tell us what are some of, what's the one takeaway that our listeners can, can um, expect uh, from reading the book? Two things. Well, actually a couple of things. One, when you're in a bad relationship or you're in a good relationship and you're having problems, I'm going to show you how to get your mojo back. Mm -hmm. Go back to the old you when you was living life and you was being great. So I want to get the old you back to bring yourself back to life. And that ch chapter is actually my favorite one. Uh, called boss up your life mm -hmm. and then secondly just know your worth and your value as a woman and you don't have to stay content and be settling in a bad situation if you've done everything that you can do in a relationship and nothing is working walk away it's too many men out here <laughs> that's yeah, right. ready to mingle you're beautiful you're young oh it doesn't matter what your age may be just walk away if you have children co-parents it's okay walk away because the situation could only get worse and you actually are hurting each other by staying in that relationship mm -hmm. right wow you're so knowledgeable where do you draw all your knowledge from I read books and <laughs> life situations but honestly I've been through so much I'm 30 years old I'm telling my age guys I know I don't look my age but I read a lot of books and through life you know life is the best knowledge you have to go through it to be able to tell it. And I tell my audience all the time, I would never preach and talk about anything if I have not personally been through it myself. Got it. Yeah. So, so I went through a lot at an early age. Wow. Well, I mean, you're in, and the fact that you are 
um, courageous in sharing some of that with us and helping others, uh, helping other women um, power through it. That's that's what I, I I love about your personality and your ethic. So your work ethic and your and just your all everything about you. Um, I really enjoy that about you. Now you talked about something, a phrase you said, "boss up your life." Can you tell us yes. a little bit about that? Your philosophy behind that. So bossing up your life comes in so many categories such as, okay, I'm going to give you a scenario before I get into it. Let's say me for an example. Mm-hmm. I lost myself in my relationship. I gained weight. My, I had a lot of bad health issues. Mm-hmm. I lost a lot of friends. My look, my image, everything was going downhill. But then something got inside of me was like, no, no, Shanti, it's time to boss up your life. It's time to, you know, do what you have to do. Mm-hmm. So bossing up your life, meaning go after your dream, start that job that you always wanted, go after and start that new business, get a new look, start getting healthy, going to the gym, doing makeover, start traveling, networking with new people and just build, building, rebuilding yourself overall. So bossing up your life comes in so many areas. And I actually, in the book, I break it down to the core. I posted a picture of a before picture and an after picture when I was a big girl. Mm. And how much weight I've lost just from focusing on me. Awesome. And then that's what, I think that's where um, a lot of women um, fall into that trap, right? When they start to just really um, lose sight of themselves because they're focusing on other people or other relationships or other, um, issues or situations that we lose sight of ourselves and we don't really appreciate ourselves or or, ourselves and even love ourselves. Right. So I I love that. I really, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to be one of the many people that are listening to, to jump on the book. I started reading a little bit like the intro and, but I'm super, I'm excited to read, uh, to read it. So thank you so much for sharing that. You also have a podcast. Can you talk about that? I know you're on hiatus for a little bit, but yes, about that. And then tell us what the revamp is going to look like. So my podcast, once again, it was never planned out. (laughs) Um, I actually just woke up one morning and I was like, you know what? I have a lot of things I want to get off my chest. So I look at my podcast, the Shanti Helena show as a outlet for me to voice my opinion. Um, It depends on what I'm going through, through the week. I never really plan my topics out because my topics is based off self-help determination women empowerment relationships what's going on in the media what's trendy so i started my podcast a little bit over two and a half three months ago okay and it's been doing good my numbers is actually really amazing um recently i had to take a small little break i had some family issues uh, my grandfather was 95 years old no 94 passed away and my aunt passed away so i've been dealing with that trying to get back on track as far as my brand um my revamp of my podcast i've t- taken like a two three week break so i'm looking to get up and running within the next two weeks or so so the revamp version pretty much is going to be around the same topics a little bit different but I'm going to start adding guests on my show and Mm -hmm. the guest is going to be pretty interesting um you'll be amazed of the women that be in my dm (laughs) yay so yes so I'm going to talk to some real life side chicks I'm going to talk to men on why they cheated what do they learn how Mm to um better the relationship um and it's pretty much it so the revamp version is going to be a little bit more intense and i'm just really really excited like i'm super excited awesome so um you will share we'll share some of the links um for us for our listeners and we'll have that in the show notes everybody so that um you can follow along and when she's ready to um relaunch it you'll um, be in the know so I, I encourage all of you listeners to um, subscribe to her podcast when it's ready and up and running. Yes? Yes. yes. Well, uh, they can still go to Apple and mm-hmm. Spotify, Google Play, and just type in Shanti Helena, and they can play catch up. Awesome. So we can episodes. Yes. Yeah, we can listen to all the back episodes. So awesome. So now as an entrepreneur, because we're always constantly go, go, go and looking for all the, you know, different ways to um, have several, you know, revenue streams 
here and there. Can you share some of the obstacles or some of the challenges you faced as an entrepreneur and how you were able to overcome them? Yes, absolutely. So when I came out with my book, that was a big dollar sign. Mm. And I had a choice to make at the time. Once again, I'm not working. Uh, my income is a fluctuating, but I had a lump sum of money that I had in the bank. And I invested into my book and I had to make a plan to say, hey, you're investing these thousands of dollars. What is your goal plan to get your money back in return in case your money does not come back in return? What are you going to do? So, of course, um, before my book came out, I started accepting pre-orders in February. My official drop date was March 23rd. Mm -hmm. So I was blessed to receive my um let's just say what I invested in my book back before the book actually dropped. Okay. So I was happy with that. But once the book had dropped, I'm like, okay, I'm still getting orders. Things is going good. But then those orders start trickling down. So that's when Shanti Helena had to get really, really creative with her income. So <laughs> my family owned a catering company, H and B catering event planning company. And on the side from time to time, I do, I am the director of sales, but I only get paid when deals are closed. So I try to hit high paying clients mm -hmm. to make sure I can get a nice percentage off the sales. So between my book and I do that, as I mentioned um, earlier, and actually in my book, I actually drive Lyft part-time from time to time as well. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I do small digital marketing projects for family and friends, uh, building content, um, depending on what it is, I'll create it for them for a small price. But that's pretty much how I've been able to manage. And I'll talk about all that in my chapter of Boston of my life because my lifestyle minimum is at 4000 a month. Mm -hmm. So I still need to make that $4,000 a month. What could I do? Right. And my motto is, long as all of my bills is paid, mm -hmm. I'm okay. I can have zero dollars in my bank account, but my bills is paid, food in my refrigerator, gas in my car, money on the side to do whatever I need to do towards my brand. And I'm happy. So um, Shanti Helena, it sounds as though you are true as to what they say. You are definitely, you know, a, a, a hustler and you make things happen. You are not the kind of person that just sits there and waits for opportunity. You, you go and you make opportunity happen for you. Absolutely. Yes, awesome. absolutely. And we should all like pattern ourselves after that because if, you know, we all, each of each one of us have the, um, the ability to, you know, create multiple streams of income. If we just dig deep and, you know, make, make use of what we already have, right. Or, or what are, what are, what our talents are, wouldn't you say? Yes, absolutely. And that's the key and that's the goal. Yeah. Awesome. So now on the flip side, could you talk about something, a memorable moment in your journey, um, as an entre entrepreneur and, and can you share some of that with us? Well, I was shocked that I was able to make my investment back from my book before the book even launched. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. I was like shocked because I was really scared because when I first posted my title, well, the cover of my book on Facebook, it actually went viral. And honey, I had a lot of nasty messages in my inbox because... Mm. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, that was my marketing strategy, controversy sales. Right. So when I saw those numbers, I'm like, this is kidding me. This is, can't be real. So that was a really, really big moment for me because I was really afraid. Like, God, I stepped out on faith. I gave you my last and I just hope I leave break even. But God blessed me to where I actually made more than what I invested. That's awesome. And it happened in um, probably when you least expected it. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, and I think that's what you, I, I think that attributes to, to what you were saying. You have to step out, you know, a, a leap of faith and you just really have to just trust God and let him kind of take over when you, um, so he kind of leads your way and you just kind of go with it. Don't you? I, I feel, I feel like you have, you have a higher sense of knowledge um, and it's all God given, God driven. Yes. And if I have a bad feeling about something, of course I would not do it. I don't know. I do not question God, but I was very shocked at the numbers. I was really scared because mm -hmm. once again, the title of my book, because it's, 
women assumed that I was agreeing of being a side chick and I had to explain. I had to do like a whole PSA announcement on my social media and say, hey, I'm asking a question. I didn't make a statement. That's the difference. Now, if I made a statement, then of course, come at me, say whatever you want to say, but I'm asking a question. And once I had to actually break down the whole thing, everyone was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go buy your book and go check it out. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this podcast episode. We'll be right back after this short message from one of our sponsors. Comfotherm Thermal Wraps are designed to help relieve the pain and swelling in and around the jaw, especially after wisdom teeth extractions. For more information, visit comfotherm.com. That's comfotherm.com. Hey there, Annie Rivera here. Thanks for tuning in to Annie Talks. Be sure to tell your friends about subscribing to the podcast and don't forget to rate and review the podcast. Doing so helps out with the algorithm and helps others to find this podcast too. I also invite you to like my Annie Talks Facebook page. There you'll find other news, information, upcoming events, and all sorts of things. Stay in the know with Annie Talks. I also invite you to join the Annie Talks Community Facebook group where we carry the conversation from the podcast episode to the Facebook group. Ask questions about the episode, about a guest, about the locations, you name it. Ask away. This forum is for you. See you on the Annie Talks Community Facebook group. Besides the revamping of your podcast and you are um, basically promoting your book, what, what else do you have coming down the pipe for you? So I have two things. Uh, I am prepping for book number two. Wow. Yay. Good. I'm in prep mode for book number two. Um, I have two different titles or topics that I want to talk about. So I'm just seeing exactly what my readers want. And I kind of think I know what they want already. They try to keep me in the whole side chick, side man role. So (laughs) I'm like, okay, I'll roll with it then. So I am in preparation for book number two, gathering my data, doing my interviews and stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Next, I am currently about to launch within the next few weeks a t-shirt um, apparel line for women t-shirts and sweaters and mm-hmm. as well called say and wear it it's going to be say and the letter n i'm sorry say and wear it.com mm-hmm. um, it's going to be very bold and uh or go like very bold statements so like i mentioned before your t-shirt may say, um, I'm a diva today. I'm living my best life. Or who are you looking at? I'm a boss chick. Like little stuff like that, but real cute. I created all the designs myself. Um, my distributor, one of my distributors is American Apparel. So the t-shirts are going to be in really, really good quality. Mm-hmm. So that's something I'm working on next. Um, everything is pretty much done. I just have to do little small things on the back end of the website and then start prepping for my lunch. So those are the two things that I am working on uh, as of right now. Awesome. I'm excited to see that. That So um, keep us abreast as to when that launch is and then where can we follow you um, when we, when, uh, so we can keep your, uh, up with your progress. Yeah. So follow me on Instagram, Shanti.Helena, S H. A-N-T-I dot Helena, H-E-L-E-N-A. And follow them on on there. Um, I have a business page for my t-shirt line. It's not a big following base, but I put everything on my main page and tag that page. So if you follow Shanti dot Helena and you'll get all the updates. If you go to my website, you can subscribe to my website as well as ShantiHelena.com. You will be able to know when it's actually going to drop. Awesome. I'm excited to, we'll we'll keep tabs on that. Now, if you could do anything differently, uh, what would you tell your 21 year, uh, 21 year old self about what you know now about your future? What would, what could you say um, to your 21 year old self? If I was 21 (laughs) and I'm going to just be blatantly honest and that's what I am, I would have not went for college. Oh, really? I would have went and received my associates in radio and TV. 
and probably took a few business classes. Mm -hmm. I was born with a gift of gab of marketing and entrepreneurship because that's, <laughs> I was raised around entrepreneurs. My grandfather never worked a job. My mother, my everyone in my family are entrepreneurs. So that's pretty much all I know. And back then I was making a significantly a lot of money mm -hmm. and I was not spending it the right way. If I would have known what I know now, I'll probably be a millionaire today. Ah, I mean, it's not to say that college isn't for everybody or is for somebody, but it, in, in your case, you probably would have started um, entrepreneurship a lot earlier. Than, and, well, yeah. in, in a more full-time base, because back then I was playing with it. I was doing something here, doing something there. Mm -hmm. But if I was to exactly, let's say I wrote this book when I was 21 years old. I would probably be on book number four or five by now, probably doing major speaking engagements and being on someone's television. And, and back then, I actually was working in the media entertainment business. I used to work with Atlanta Records, so I was a college representative. So I, I worked with Trey Songz, Jay-Z, B.O.B., anyone that was signed under Atlanta Records, I was already in a realm of the entertainment world. Hmm. I just did not take advantage of of it then because I was just, you know, young, didn't right. know no better. <laughs> right. Oh, well, you know, see, that's, I mean, we, we, I think we all th go through a progressed path of life, um, you know, that's set before us. And then, yeah, in retrospect, we always say, oh, I wish I would have done this a lot sooner. But now that you have that knowledge, um, so now you're empowering people out there to, you know, kind of re-examine themselves. Yes, college is for some people. It's college not for everybody, but college is definitely for some people. But if you have the wherewithal and you want to, and you know what you want to do, why not just do it? Just go out there and do it. And, and, but, you know, learn along the way so that you're doing it right. But yeah, you know, I, I still like your entrepreneurship entrepreneur um, approach, whether it be the 21 year old self or now, I think your entrepreneur's uh, approach is definitely something that all us women, including myself and, and aspiring entrepreneurs out there can learn from. So don't, you know, don't feel like you, you, you didn't do what you were supposed to do at 21 right. years old. You still, you still have the ability to, and it's not too late to do anything. Um, but you still have that ability to do that. And, and you're, you're, um, you're making uh, other people aware of that, other women aware of that as well. Right. And to add in on that, it's so many resources out here mm -hmm. where you can educate yourself. I love YouTube University. Um, I've learned a lot from YouTube. I learned a lot from listening to other podcasters and to building your own brand, your business. I'm the queen of Amazon Prime. I'm always ordering educational marketing books. I'm the queen on LinkedIn. I'm part of so many groups and I'm still educating myself today. But I feel like if I would have took advantage and did those things when I was 21 and, mm -hmm. you know, just rushing under the rug, I felt like I would have been way bigger than where I'm at. But it's still a lot of opportunities out there. Some people say, well, if I don't go to college, then how can I learn these things? Read books, mm -hmm. you know? Follow some motivational people. If you have a few extra dollars, hire you a coach or, you know, it's so many resources out here that could have saved me $150,000. <laughs> right. I know. See, and, and millennials today and even the Gen Ys and Zs all have it right at their fingertips. And, and we kind of had to go a long way around it, right, to discover that. But I still like your approach because I think you, you have the right mentality. You have the right go-getter um, philosophy. And I think, like I said, we can all each learn from something from you. So thank you for sharing all of that. You're welcome. And then what parting words do you have for our listeners? What's, the, um, what's one thing that you want our listeners to know about Shanti, Helena, and and how to pursue what they want to do. Never put yourself on hold. Always stand firm and believe in yourself. Even when no one else is believing you, stay firm on what you want. If you want a new career, go get it. How do you get it? If you want to start your new job, I mean, your new job, new career, new business, anything, whatever you want to do, you have to go out there and get it. Do not sit around and wait on someone to hand it to you. People are not going to take you seriously until you put out there first. So you have to put it in the universe to get it in return. And I'm a standing testimony. As I mentioned earlier, I was, you know, my house burned down. I was homeless for a while, living house to house. I lost my relationship. I lost my job. And I still was going hard and people was like, 
how are you doing this? Mm. How? Mm-hmm. So there is no excuse. There is no excuse. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And everybody, I will have all of Shanti Helena's um, social media sites linked down below in the show notes and her website, everything all down in the show notes. So be sure to check her out. Listen to her podcast. Go back and listen listen to some of her episodes from her um, season one um, uh, podcast episodes and then follow her on her um, website and her social media and, and be on the lookout for her t-shirt or her, um, her, her new launch for her new product. So I think it's going to be exciting to see all that. And I'm super excited and I'm super excited that you're on my show and I have a wonderful connection in Shanti Helena. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on my show. Thank you. It's Shanti Helena. <laughs> Well, that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Annie Talks and learning about Shanti Helena. You can purchase her book from her online store on her website, shantihelena.com or on amazon.com. Type in the words, why side chicks winning. Don't forget to follow Shanti Helena on all her social media. I will have all that information in the show notes below. Now, before you go, if you aren't already subscribed to my podcast, I invite you to hit subscribe and that way you'll be notified anytime we upload an episode. If you are already subscribed, thank you so much. Please be sure to rate and review this podcast and add a comment or two. This will help others to find this podcast as well. You can follow me, Annie Talks, on all my social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. I'll have all the links in the show notes below as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and keep listening to Annie Talks. Hey guys, it's Santi Halima. Thank you for tuning in today with Annie Talks. 